Statistics and Excel, deck of cards, statistics and Excel. Got data? Let's get stuck into it with statistics and Excel. Or actually one note here, but we'll still talk about Excel. You're not First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Not required to, but if you have access to OneNote, we're in the icon left hand side, OneNote presentation 1325 deck of cards, statistics, and Excel tab. We're also uploading transcripts to OneNote so that you could use the immersive reader tool changing the language if you so choose and then being able to either read the transcript or listen to this transcript in multiple different languages using the timestamps to tie into the video presentations. OneNote desktop version here, remembering the two major categories of statistical problems we are working with. Number one, where we have all the data of the population, we then using our statistical tools to organize that data in such a way that we can extract meaning from it. Number two, where we don't have all the data of the entire population, but maybe we can get a sample of the population applying statistical tools to that sample in a similar way as we would apply statistical tools to the entire population, not because we're interested in the sample itself, but hoping that we can take the information from the sample and it will tell us something about the entire population. Now, in prior presentations, we looked at examples such as heights, where we took an entire population and, and then took a sample from that population so that we can test out whether or not the sample does give us information that we can possibly apply to the entire population. We thought about a more uh, theoretical situation of a coin flip where the entire population is basically infinity, infinite number of coin flips, and the sample then would be however many times we flip a coin in order to test that out. We're, now we want to take a look at a deck of cards because when we look at a coin flip, for example, you still have uh, only those two options, 50-50. The deck of cards adds a little bit more complexity because now we have 52 uh, cards in a deck. So we want to be thinking about the statistical implications, how we might organize the data, as well as how we might use our tools of Excel to help us out with our analysis when we're working with something like a deck of cards. So if we think about a, a deck of cards, uh, we have numbers of the cards and we have uh, the suits of the cards that we're going to have to be dealing with. Now with the numbers of the cards, it goes from ace or one, two, three, four, five, six, up to 10. And then it doesn't keep on going up to 13, but it kind of does because you've got the jack, queen, and king. So we could assign a number to all the cards. We can say, well, they're basically numbered from one to 13. Uh, and notice if you play different games, you might say, well, some games say that all the face cards count for 10 or something like that. Those are particular games. Uh, but if we just simply assign a number to the cards, we can do that and say, well, there's one to 13. That can be a useful tool for working in uh, Excel or even for memorization of certain things. And then we have the suits. I'm not putting the suits in any kind of order of importance. The suits might have different implications for different games that are being played, but the suits, we have the four suits, spades, hearts, diamonds, and clubs. So if we take each of the cards then, such as an ace, we could have four aces, the ace of spades, ace of hearts, ace of diamonds, ace of clubs. Therefore, we have four aces of different suits. We have four twos of different suits. We have four threes of different suits and so on and so forth. And we've got the four jacks of different suits, four queens and four kings. 
So if we add all this up, we can put this into a table to try to analyze this, right? We could say, okay, well, I, if I number the cards one to, one to 13, and then each of those cards have uh, four, of, four of each of them, that's gonna give us four of each uh, card or 52. So you can add these up both ways nicely in a table, right? So now you've got one, two, three, four. I can sum up this column to get to 52, or I can say how many uh, of each suit are in a deck, how many spades, how many hearts, how many diamonds, how many clubs, 13 of each, 13 plus 13 plus 13 plus 13 is going to be 52. So that's nice, that's useful uh, for us to kind of organize this in our minds uh, and on the page. <laughs> but uh, now I still have this kind of issue if, if I want to set up some kind of statistical problem because uh, I don't have one numerical value for each card, right? I have, to, I have to say two things in order to name one card. I've got to say, well, this is an ace of spades or an ace of hearts or an ace of diamonds. I don't have uh, one number that can stand for the card. So that's gonna be kind of an issue for us that we'll take a look at in a second. Now, if I just run some standard statistical kind of analysis, I can say, well, uh, one card out of 52. What if I had a deck of 52 cards? It was an even deck of 52 cards. And I draw one card out of 52. Well, then then the chances of it being any one of those numbers, if it was chances of it being an, an, an ace of hearts or whatever, is one out of 52, right? Or uh, point, uh, 1.92 if I move the decimal about over. And I can say, okay, well, what, if, what are the odds of any suit I think that's how you spell suit, right? Or is that like a business suit? I don't know. <laughs> 13 out of 52, because there's 13 of each suit. 13 of each suit out of 52. So the odds of pulling a hearts or the odds of, of clubs or whatever, 25%, right? So because it's 13 over 52. And then I can say, okay, well, what are the odds of, uh, of one number of any suit? Meaning what are the odds that I choose an ace? Or, or a jack. Well, there's four jacks uh, in the deck of 52. So I can then say, well, then four over 52 is gonna be about 7.96 or so on and so forth. So there's some standard statistical analysis we can get just from that table. Now, the next thing we might do if we're, if we're trying to analyze this more is I, I could say, well, why don't I assign a number to each of the cards that's a unique number. Now, obviously there's many different ways that you can do this, but I'm just, the concept would be if I assign a number to it, then I can have just one cell representing any card. So for example, here we had, if I, if I regroup my, my table over here vertically, I can just say, okay, uh, I, I need two columns the way I had it before, right? I need the ace, to 13, which represents the king of spades. And then it starts over, ace of hearts to 13, which is the king of hearts, ace of diamonds to 13, uh, the king of diamonds and so on. But what I'd like to do is assign one number to it. So I'm gonna make this other column and just assign one through 52. So now I've got one number assigned to each card. And if I, if I can do that, and again, there's no like uniform numbering system. I could have put the, the clubs on top or the hearts on top or whatever. But once I have a numbering system with one number, then I can use my Excel tools a little bit easier. And it, it might actually help for some memorization uh, tools if you, if you had a system like that coming up as well. Then I can say, okay, well, what, how can I simulate possibly a random draw from a deck. So this is how you can kind of make a computer, your own little computer, you know, uh, card game or something, right? You can program basically Excel in some, in to some degree, but you know, you could say, you could say, well, what if I took a random draw of 52 cards? Well, I can use a, I can use the random generator here uh, now because I've named each card individually, the bottom card being one, the top card being 52. Now, notice there's kind of an issue with this. I won't get into it right now if you were to try to play games with this or something like that, because if you took one card out of the 52 card deck, right, now there's only 51 cards and that one card you took out 
you know, is gone. So you have to kind of account for for the fact that when you draw cards out uh, in in a practice game. But I won't I won't get into that in detail here. Just want to note that you can kind of create a generator here based on this now by saying I'm going to make a random generator. And here's my random generations as if I took one card, I put it back in the deck, shuffled the deck again, and drew one card. And each of these numbers then represent a unique, uh, a unique card, because according to my table. So the first one I drew 39, 39 according to my table is the 13 of diamonds. Uh, which is a king of diamonds, because 13 represents a king, because because of my, right. So that if I if I if I had a a uh, a 48, 48 represents the nine of clubs. Okay, so now we've got a unique a, a unique card, and and I could take I could even take these numbers if I wanted to, and tell Excel to find the related you know suit. Uh, so it'll give me the it'll give me the the number and suit, but we won't get into that now. But then I can take I can take my random numbers from my random number generator, which is always just going to keep generating random numbers, and and then paste it so that it's just a hard coded number over here. So now I've pasted these random numbers that we that we drew out. And we can, you know, we can do some analysis of it. So let's take a look at our table here. Let's do it this way. So this is a, a similar table that we had before. We had where we had our assigned numbers. So these are the assigned numbers. These are the card numbers, one through 13 spades, one through 13 hearts, one through 13 diamonds. These are the numbers we assigned, just one through 52. These are the suits. And then we have, let's just delete it here. We have the results. Uh, so, so the results are using this count formula, which I'm saying, uh, we're telling Excel, count this range of data uh, if uh, the range of data has the assigned number in it. So in other words, this cell is, has this formula in it which is using a count function. And we want to say, given this sample, that we just drew out a number every time we drew a number out of the deck and then put it back into the deck, right? And then drew out another number, one out of 52 uh, each time of the random sample, however many times we did it, we did it a fair amount of times, is going to give us a 79. So 79 times it, it was an ace, uh, an ace of spades particularly right and then and then uh 100 times it was a a, uh, a two and then notice down here if i go down here t this is a 29 so it looked for how many 29s i got and the 29s represent a three of diamonds so we had 88 three of diamonds you see that that are drawing out of here now if I look at the percentage, then this then is the percent compared to the total. So if I add up all the results, the results add up to 5000. So we actually did this 5000 times. So we kind of mimicked us taking a card out of the deck and then putting it back into the deck, shuffling it, taking a card out, you know, 5000 times. All right. And then so it's so the total of these is 79. 79 over 5,000. If I move the decimal two places over, that's 1.58. So that means we drew out an ace of spades 1.58% of the time. This one is 100 divided by 5,000. So that's 2%. Uh, so we drew out 2% of the time a two of spades. The three of spades, uh, we drew out 109 over 5,000, which is 2.18%. Now, according to what we would expect to happen, because we're kind of mirroring uh, a similar situation with the coin flip here, where in the coin flip, we kind of imagined that the entire population would be as though you did this infinite amount of times, in which case, if it was a fair coin, it would be 50 head, 50% 50 head, 50% tail. In this case, same kind of concept, we would say, well, if we imagined that we did this infinite amount of times, drew a card out of the deck and then put it back in, drew a card out an infinite amount of times, then we would expect that it would come out to be one over 52, which is going to be that 
0.92, if I move the decimal place over, percent, of about, rounded. So, so now we can compare our results, the statistical results. We came up with 1.58, 79 times out of 5,000 versus the actual. So we have our differences of, in this case, 0 0.34, 0 0.08. And you can see that the differences are kind of, uh, are going to, are going to, some are over and some are under. So we have a similar kind of situation we did with the coin flips here, right? With the coin flips, we were trying to, the null hypothesis was the coin was fair and we want to then flip the coin multiple times to see if that was false. Same thing here, the null hypothesis is that the deck has 52 cards in it and it's fair and you're drawing it correctly and, and it's a random draw and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and if, if that was the case, we would expect if you did it infinite amount of times, it would come out to 1.92. And so then we're, we're gonna do it and see if that is the case in, in with our statistical analysis. And this is our uh, differences <clears throat> that we have here. So then if I summed up all of the, if I averaged all of these, uh, all of these numbers, I come up to 1.923, which is pretty close to the, to the actual result, right? Because we did it, because we did it a fair amount of times. And by that, I mean, we ran the, the experiment a lot of times, 5,000 is pretty, a, a good number of times. So now we could also say, well, what if I took, what if I took the count of uh, the spades, for example, because we know with the statistical uh, numbers that we looked at, we'd say, well, if I just looked at spades, there's 13 out of 52. So if I did that infinite amount of times, if I drew one card infinite amount of times, you would think that I would have a spade like 25% of the time, right? So, so then if I count the spades here, that's going to be using this formula. So I'm now I'm looking for uh, the spades. So, so, so just notice the function here. You could arrange this function a couple different ways because now I've got a sums if function, meaning I want you to sum the results. So the results are going to be this column and I want you to sum them for the spades. So here are all the spades down to here. Now, in order to sum the spades, I could, I could tell Excel, I want you to sum this column, the sum range, if this column has a spade in it, right? That would be the easy, you know, that would probably be the easiest way to do it based on this table. But you can also say that if I use the absolute uh, numbers over here, there's the spades are from one to 13. So you could try to tell Excel that uh, you want to sum this column if the, if the numbers between, you know, one and 13. I believe this, when we did it, we, we did it based on this column here. But in any case, Excel can, add that up for you, right? It, it'll add it up. And then we can take the percent. So we can say, okay, well, I've got one, three, one, two, three, three out of 5,000 uh, draws. Uh, well, let me do that again. One, two, three, three out of 5,000. And that comes out to two, four point six, six. And this one is one, three, three, four out of 5,000. That comes out to 26.68%. Uh, uh, the percentages out of all of them, of course, add up to 100 because that's going to give us our check number. And we would expect that it would be about 25%, which is 13 over 52 cards in the deck. 13 of every suit over 52. So you can see this one is off. You know, they're, they're off, but they're somewhere in the range, right, that we would expect. So the results seem to kind of verify that this is a, a fair deck that has actually 52 cards in it. Uh, we can also do the same thing and say, well, what if, what if we were to count like each card, but there's four cards of each suit. So anyway, in ca in the case of, of aces, I could say, well, there's four aces out of 13. I'm sorry, four aces out of 52. So we would expect that we would draw an ace. Uh, uh, if, if we did this infinite amount of times, the whole population of the cards, about 7.6. So we can tell Excel, try to uh, count the number of, of aces. So we've got another sum if formula, meaning I want you to sum the range. So we're going to tell Excel, sum up this range of the results if the result has uh, an ace in it. 
Now notice when I look for an ace, it, it's easier to look at this column because this is the card number that's going to show me the one ace here, another one. So we can tell Excel, sum up this column if the, the criteria, this column, has a one in it. Otherwise, it gets a little bit more confusing. We could also say sum up this column if this column has either a one or uh, the uh, the next ace is uh, is down here or a 27, right? Or a 40, right? So it would be easier to 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 use these two columns, right? Sum sum up this result if this column has a one in it, right? So we could we we do that here. We're going to sum it up. <clears throat> some criteria, criteria range, uh, if it's equal to a one. And if we do that, then these are the results we get. And this first one, for example, is 363 over divided by the total 5,000. 5,000 gives us uh, 0.7.26. This one's 7.46. And again, they look somewhat, you know, within a range that seems reasonable if we compare that to what we expect to happen if we did this infinite amount of times it would be 4 over 52 or 7.69 percent and then again we can look at the differences and some are under some are over that's kind of what we would expect so based on this kind of statistical drawing it looks somewhat like a fair deck now we could make histograms of this this, uh, what, we're, what we did here is try to make a histogram of the entire data set. So we just did a histogram and then I adjusted the histogram to try to give me each number. But the problem with the histogram, if you're trying to do that, is that it needs a range. So this is going from one to two, two to three, three to four, and so on. But you could see that it gives you just, just how many times we drew, in essence, each number is basically what I'm looking for. And you can see it's kind of somewhat even right because you would expect if you did an infinite amount of times for example if uh if there was if there was uh each number one over 52 is that uh, uh percent wise 1.92 percent times 5,000. we did this 5,000 times you would expect them to be hovering around uh 96 right that's kind of what what you would expect to be the case and in it you know so there so there we have it now you could also make that with a bar chart so in this case i used a bar chart to look at uh the results so now i've got one through 52 so i did the same thing but this time i assigned this to the x-axis and the results to the y-axis and now this one's notice the bar charts a little bit nicer because now i can just have one number represented down here instead of the bucket ranges even though you can kind of get a similar chart with both of them and then i added the numbers it's a little it's a little crowded in but you get the idea and then this is going to be a histogram of the percent results so just to get an idea of that we've got the percent results now remember the percents you would expect to be to be around one over 52 you would expect them to be hovering around 1.92 so and that's kind of what we have here right so it's a little bit over here but 1.92 is kind of what we would uh expect is kind of like the middle point of uh of a histogram like that and you and you, and that's kind of what what you what you see here so here's the bucket 1.54 to 1.72 there were there were seven results in that bucket range and so on and so forth okay so the next thing we can say well uh what if i wanted to skew the data how could i represent that in excel if it wasn't a fair deck like there's a card missing or something well we can do the same kind of random generation one to 52 and there's multiple ways that you can then take that randomly generated number set and then skew it in whatever way you want if you wanted to practice using a data set that wasn't exactly fair depending on what you're doing but for us let's just say that we took our data this represents an even uh one over 52 as if you drew one card five thousand times out of a, a 52 fair deck 
and then we're going to go into it using in Excel the find function and replace. So now we're going to replace everything that was a 29 uh, with a 1. So we're going to remove all the 29s which I think is, is, is like a three or something of some diamonds or something. And then we're going to replace it with a one, which is an ace of spades. So now someone has stacked the deck with the ace of spades and removed the, the three of diamonds or something like that. So let's see what that would look like. So now, in, so now this is what we made the change on. We, we increased the ace of spades and we removed entirely the three of diamonds. So then if I if I populate our results here, we have our assigned numbers again on this column. This is the card number with the suit, one through the king of spades, one through the uh, king of hearts, or ace through the king. And then these are the results. Now the results, we're, we're doing the same thing. We're saying count if, meaning I'm telling Excel to count this number, these numbers, but we adjusted it uh, to remove all of what are they <laughs> all of the three of diamonds and replace them with a with a spade <clears throat> ace of spades so we did a count that column uh uh, uh and we we said count if and then according to this number and so the results we get now we've got these results and we can say okay if i do my same analysis i can say well this 181 uh Ace of Spades came up out of 5,000 divided by 5,000. That came out to 3.62, which obviously looks quite high because you would expect it to be 1 over 52. If you did it infinite amount of times, 1.92, right? And then the, you could do this for the rest of them. This one came out to 108 divided by 52. Uh, 108, 108 divided by 5,000 comes out to that this one came up to 94 divided by 5000 and so on so those these are hovering around kind of what we would expect so this is the actual this is this is what we would what what it would be if we did an infinite amount of times or the fair amount and then of course if we get down to here we see there are zero uh diamonds or three of diamonds obviously that's an indication that that would be very rare to happen if we drew 5,000 times out of the deck, we didn't get any of those, right? So that would be unusual. So obviously this would be an indication that the null hypothesis that it's a fair deck would be uh, incorrect. And we probably, we can also do the same thing if we counted the spades, right? So if I counted up all of the cards, because we increased the ace of spades, you would expect the ace of spades to be higher so now we got we've got uh, the spades came out to be one three six four out of five thousand, which is twenty seven point two eight versus twenty five percent, which would be the ace of spades. There's thirteen out of fifty two. If it was fair, twenty five percent, right? And so so you can do that kind of analysis, and you can do the analysis with each you know card. But I won't. We won't do that again here. Let's just take a look at the at the uh, charts. So here are uh, uh, the results. Here, so here's a histogram of uh, the results. So that's a histogram of this one. And again, you would expect if I had a histogram of the results that that the results would be around. I mean, if I drew one out of fifty-two, that's uh, 1.92 percent times 5,000. So you would you would think it would be hovering around uh, 96. And so you've got it kind of an, around here, but you've got these kind of funny outliers that, and sometimes those are the things that you know, depending on what we're looking for, the outliers might be something that you know that is that we're is going to draw our attention, right? And then we've got if we did it this way. This is just a histogram of the of the full data set again. So we took the full data set and said count them. And this one gives us a pretty good picture of something funny going on because because this would be I tried to get the the histogram to to do something similar to listing just one out of fifty two, right? Uh, uh, and 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 we get obviously this one is 
looking quite high and this one's at zero and we would expect that this would be hovering uh, around uh, 1 over 52 times 5,000 uh, around the 96, right? So this one, like, that was, obviously that looks funny. So that will give us some indications on the random draws. And I can, and then I just regenerated the bar chart this way. So now I can actually have the numbers 1 to 52, not using a histogram, but the bar charts. And in this case, I used uh, uh, this column for the X and then the results for the Y. So these are just a couple different ways we can see the data and analyze and analyze the data in a similar way we did with the coin flips so that we can then use our kind of sampling, the sampling concept being that the whole population would be as though we drew the cards an infinite amount of times. And if we did that, again the, the, then we can come we can we can think what, what we know the whole population theoretically in this case right we know the whole population uh would be would be you know one out of 52 so percent right uh, and so and so again we can compare that to the sample being whatever finite amount of times that we run that test and then of course we can take a look at the results from the sample and see how different they are from the null hypothesis or what we would expect the entire population to be uh, if it was fair. And then if there's a substantial difference between the two, that's the evidence that we might have that we would then reject the null hypothesis and, uh, and, 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 and come to a different conclusion.